Delta. Ouch. Did I shock you? Yes. What are we doing in the test kitchen today? Today we are here talking about our most disliked, least, our least, least liked. liked, most disliked. The most. Yeah. Oh, that's too yeah. radical. Yeah. Disliked yeah. ingredients. Right. Ugh. Ugh. Those ingredients. Mm-hmm. We're talking about ingredients we don't like. Ingredients we don't like, yeah. I yeah. mean, goat cheese. I don't like tofu. Peanut butter, bananas. I'm not a fan of raw carrots. I don't like kidneys. Mayonnaise-based salads. I freaking can't stand lamb. I strongly dislike liver. Think about your body, right? Uh-huh. The liver filters out all of the uh -huh. that's terrible for your body. Or you can think about it like everything's gone through it. You know, it's gotten, that's what gives it character. Filtering out all that alcohol. All that whiskey that those chickens are drinking. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make you something and you're probably not gonna like it. <laughs> I'm assuming there's gonna be liver in it. There's gonna be liver in it. Okay, let's all do right, it. All right, let's do it. We got the squishy white bread, smuckers, and then a little bit of onion. It's not weird. It's not weird, don't worry not about it. Not weird at all, let's go. So I've got a really hot cast iron here. Yes. I wanna get a good sear. I'm gonna sear it in some clarified butter. Okay. I want that high smoke point. I wanna get good color, but I want it to still be like medium rare on the inside. So okay. here are our livers. Nice and hot, so we can get some good color on the outside. Doesn't smell bad. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's like, is that liver? Oh no. Ooh, look at that color. Come on, Alex. Beautiful sear, come on. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Livers are so good for you, and you're killing the bird anyway, so you might as well eat the Are they so good for you? Loaded with iron. Sure. I don't know what else. <laughs> if you learn to love liver, it is such a cheap and fast dinner. When I think of liver, I think of like deli liver. You know what I mean? Like, oh, like a gray glob liver. in a terrible bin in a reach in, like. Uh -huh glass deli case. Yeah. Also, when I think of liver, I just think of like my liver. And I'm like, that's not what anyone should. You think about your liver a lot, huh? Yeah. Are you worried? I'm the drinks editor of this worried. brand. <laughs> coffee soaked cherries. Coffee soaked cherries. So I'm going to deglaze with that coffee. Throw these cherries in here. It's going to add some like sweetness, some tartness, and yeah. the bitterness is going to kind of help with that metallic -y liver taste. OK. All right, that's good. And now we're going to blend this up. Okay, cool. Delightful. Just for good measure. There's your liver milkshake. Should I get a drop? <laughs> I love, you're you like, I've never seen you this anxious because I, and stressed this is so, and uncomfortable. Oh my I God. am so excited. All right, so. Uh, It doesn't taste like liver until I swallow it and the t and my tongue like pushes up against the roof of my mouth and I feel like the leftover chalkiness. That's not bad. I'm good with one bite though. <laughs> <laughs> I do not prefer gamey lamb. You don't like grass-fed lamb? I don't like grass-fed. I don't like nice lamb. Just the mean ones. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of lamb are we making today? Some grass-fed lamb chops go to Tito. Garlic, rosemary, parsley, olive oil, a little red wine vinegar, which mm -hmm. will like tenderize, but also gives it like a brightness. And maybe we'll also like cut some of that funky fat. <clears throat> yeah, that maybe. I don't like. <laughs> I used to raise sheep. I was in 4-H. It was on a farm. I would go visit it once a week and take care of it. So yeah. when it's very like in your face, this is lamb, I'm like, I'm eating my babies. That's why I don't eat bunny. But I also feel like Rabbits and cats are like half steps. So yeah. if you're gonna eat a and rabbit. And also weenie dogs are just like rabbits. Weenie dogs? Yeah, like What's, tuna. Oh, weenie dogs. Weenie. When I look at tuna's like composition <laughs> yeah. in her body, I'm like, you are a rabbit. Hey Siri, what does mm. gotadito mean? Scorch your fingers, I bet. Yeah, burned fingers. But what's finger burning about these? They're, you eat them right when they come off the grill and you eat them with your hands. So you burn your fingers on the hot little rib bones. Kind right? of a weird way to sell a dish. <laughs> If you were stranded on an island, would you eat tuna? <laughs> My dog? <laughs> what are you, a monster? Would you eat your children? No, but that's different. It's not. You're gonna want salt. A little vinegar. Boink. Thanks for cooking for me. Oh my God. 
I find that delicious. That's. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's pushing it. You've successfully masked the game, mm -hmm. which if that was the goal here, well I done. Think, I think the goal is like to get you in a place where you might be able to enjoy the exposure instead of dreading. Mm -hmm. And then over time, like maybe you would nibble a little of the fatty bit and have it with the meat and then just, you know, in 10 years, that's how long it took me with dill. Well, do you think you'll work at it, try to like a game year lamb? Definitely. Really? I'm committed to liking lamb because I know that like, I'm enjoying it right now, mm -hmm. especially when you're cooking it for me. Mm -hmm. What a gal. So the best way to get over a food aversion is uh, constant gentle pressure. These rules apply to whatever you're avoiding. There is one ingredient that I've definitely never really liked, both raw mm, or cooked for that matter, and that's green bell peppers. Hi, I'm Andy. I hate green peppers. I'm gonna make you eat green peppers and love them. That's Just it. as is, like, <laughs> like this. Like a salt? Force feed you. Hold me down. Um, eat it. No, I'm <laughs> gonna try to recreate sort of like a green pepper pest. Soy sauce. We'll see. I never done it. It just came out of my oh. head. <laughs> oh, okay. You're my guinea pigs. These peppers were roasted in the oven. Jalapenos were done on a cast iron. And same with the garlic. I'm just gonna throw everything in the cuisinart. I'm gonna add the garlic in the beginning. And I'm gonna go ahead and put like just one jalapeno, a good amount of olive oil, good amount of salt for Andy. A little bit of pepper. Because, you know, peppers and peppers go together. <laughs> little bit of cilantro. I want it to be a like, little smoother than a pesto, but I want you to see the pieces of the stuff. There's some lime juice mm -hmm. or... I mean, no. Lime. And it's my salt. More lime. Some more jalapeno. Why not? I think I'm good. I mean, I want salt, just for good measure. And then a little more pepper. Wow, I'm gonna, your nickname's gonna be Molly soon. What, salt? Yeah. I don't use that salt, I'm doing it just for you. At home, sometimes I don't even use salt for some stuff. Oh, that's ridiculous. I put salt in everything. Well, she puts salt in her smoothie. I think that's too much. She puts salt in her cereal. No. Real? Yeah. We're, we're gossiping now. <laughs> like, no, we're not really? gossiping, we're telling the world. <laughs> no, that's bad because you know you can have like high blood pressure. <laughs> okay, no. I don't think no. Molly has but no, high now, blood pressure. No, 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 but she might. <laughs> you shouldn't put salt in your cereal. Children don't do that at home. How would you describe it? It's a vegan pesto. But would you put it on pasta? I don't see why not. Is yeah. it smoky? I want. I mean, I want to try it. It can have a little more garlic. I, I, or, I only How ask much for, garlic was I in put there? like six cloves, but I will add the garlic oh a little more. Oh, my God. It's okay. Six you cloves? Have a date or something? I don't have a date. Garlic is good for you. I don't have a ring on this finger, but oh. I... Ooh, people, you heard it here first. Okay, <laughs> I'll let you try first. <laughs> okay. Although I'm going to go with the cucumber first. Okay, oopsie. He ordered lunch, he ordered the juice. I'm gonna do a proper. But I like when it sticks on it. I will use endives also. Can you tell it's green pepper? 100%. Oh, hell yeah. It's green pepper forward, if anything. It still has a kind of lasting, lingering vegetal flavor that I don't, um, still don't fully care for. I mean, I don't hate it, that's for sure. I knew he was going to say that. What do you not like? What do I not like? Sichuan peppercorns. It's a weird personal thing. I wish I liked them. I, I like the flavor of them, but it feels like it's taking away like um, a portion of my sensory experience. So I'm gonna make you mapo tofu. We're gonna try to convince you to maybe reconsider Sichuan peppercorns. Okay. Should I make rice? Y yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is Sichuan peppercorns. They look kind of like a smaller black peppercorn that's kind of like been like cracked open. What I like about mapu tofu is like you really don't need that much meat to kind of like flavor the tofu. So that's a half pound of ground pork. I'm just breaking it up a little bit. I want to get a little bit of color in there. So that's our scallion, our garlic, fresh green chili, and ginger. Mapu tofu often uses a cornstarch slurry for thickening. 
So a tablespoon of tomato paste, double concentrated, going in on top of our ground Szechuan peppercorn. Just looking for that moment where the paste darkens a little bit. Ooh, God, I love that. Gonna put our low sodium chicken broth in, and then this is black bean sauce. Honestly, like black bean sauce, magic. Are you gonna tell me about your beef with peanut butter? Beef with peanut butter? Oh, it's like beef with peanut butter. That sounds horrible. All right, silken tofu. Putting it in at the end because I don't want to break it up. I'm just gonna kind of lit it and quit it. Come back in a few minutes. Mm. Yeah, you nailed it. There's like a decent amount of the fresh green chili too, and that that changes it for me. It makes it like much more vegetal and fresh, and just like provides another dimension to it. I will definitely be giving Szechuan peppercorn another chance because I want to make this. Yeah, you should. I know where to find the recipe. Peanut butter is still dead to me, but yeah, it's great. This is great for you. You're not a huge fan of century eggs. I sadly I am not. Well. I am gonna make you eat century eggs. I today. had a feeling. I kind of love that these century eggs we unfortunately but, did not make our own come in this little carton. But also <laughs> individually wrapped, like it's, it feels like they they seem dangerous. The shell is really pretty. Why don't you do the honors? You wanna crack it? And this is the part that I find so amazing that an egg can get that like gelatinous texture. Like, are you not like s intrigued and excited by this? I mean, like maybe if I, if I, like truly the first time I ever had one, I was beyond intrigued and excited. But when now I know what it tastes like. I believe that it gets sort of buried with clay, ash, Sometimes like wood. Rice husks. Rice husks. And that sort of causes a chemical reaction that turns the outside gelatinous, the inside sort of See, creamy. See, the smell, it's like very, it smells very like ammonia-like. Thank you for this heavy duty knife. All right. Just like look See, at that center. that is. That's awesome. So I'm gonna put a little chili oil. Mm, that smells so good. On this. Sesame seeds, scallions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like now we're talking. Let's do like. Yeah, 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 that's enough. Let's do like three pieces. What you should do is get a bite that's got scallion, cilantro, sesame, and chili with the century egg just to taste all the components together, because maybe by itself it's too much, but combined with other things, it's delicious. I dig it. I was having a pretty good experience. I had like a big waft of the ammonia. The scallion is really helping because the flavor of the scallion is so strong. You know, it's like, the mild starchiness, I feel like, and the sharpness of the scallion, a little bit of the chili. I feel like there's just like a lot of different sort of flavors. And I feel like also kind of like the nuttiness of the sesame seeds works with the egg, you know? I think that like century egg plays nice with other flavors in that, in the like herby bright, herby toasty family. Yeah. Thank you, Priya. All the foods that I don't like, I'm like, I'm just, I think, I don't like to think of it as I don't like it. I'm just searching for the way to eat it that would make me like it. Yeah. Is there a point where you give up? No. No? I'll never give up. That's what I like about you, Priya. We're food writers. Like, yeah. This is our job. I thought you were about to say the F word. <laughs> I thought you were like, we're foodies. Yeah. <laughs> so my beef with peanut butter, peanut butter just on its own, it's just like eating like fermented black bean sauce on its own. It's like, what, you don't like fermented black bean sauce on its own? No, of course not. It's like a howitzer of flavor. It needs friends.